Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name's Marie. If you're just tuning in, this is part three of a series of me talking about some ingredients that recently came under fire. I've been trying to present some information to you, show you my process for researching so that you can determine the safety of these ingredients for yourselves. This ingredient, undecane, is actually what started this whole spiral of events of these videos. Um, I'll be talking a little bit more about the fear-mongering video I put out a couple weeks ago on Monday. But today I want to talk about this ingredient undecane. And the reason, the thing that stimulated all of this was that I felt like a green beauty brand incorrectly may have instilled fear in people about the use of this ingredient. So I want to establish what the ingredient is, but I also want to check out those sources. That, in a sense, was what fired me up about the whole thing in the beginning, was because I felt the sources that were used to justify raising caution about this ingredient were not applicable at all to cosmetic use. Does that make sense? Hopefully it will as we jump in. So undecane, what is it? If we do a quick Google search, what we'll see pop up is a lot of stuff because this ingredient doesn't exist solely in cosmetics or skincare. In fact, it's much more heavily used in an industrial format. On our quick Google search, we'll see that the EWG actually comes up down towards the bottom. If we click on that, we can see that it's rated a 1 for cosmetics. Um, it doesn't really tell us much about what it does, and if you come down to their data sources and data gaps, you'll see that the CIR isn't listed. So this ingredient hasn't been evaluated by the CIR yet. So that's going to lead us to some interesting ways of how to research this ingredient. Um, we're not going to have all that huge basis of topical studies or internal studies to reference, so we're going to have to kind of piece it together a little bit. Um, and that is made more complicated by how diverse the uses of undecane are in our world. So the easiest way to kind of get an idea about what this chemical does is to head over to PubChem. That will give us some actual very scientific information. It will get dense very quickly, but let's start there. Undecane is a liquid alkyne hydrocarbon. It is used as a mild sex attractant for various types of moths and cockroaches and an alert signal for a variety of ants. So actually what they're saying is that undecane is a pheromone. Now, what we need to establish right away is something very important about undecane, and that is that it is a volatile substance. Now, if you are a beauty lover, then you definitely remember the word volatile from when Tiffany Masterson of Drunk Elephant started running around preaching about not using essential oils because they were volatile. Well, what does volatile actually mean? It means that a substance has a propensity to becoming a vapor. It wants to become a vapor. Its chemical bonds are not strong. It wants to become a vapor. So, that is key to understanding undecane because where the real safety concerns arise are through inhalation and emissions. Now, this becomes important because when you're gonna look for research outside of the CIR, you're gonna see a lot of things pertaining to environmental and industrial research. Are those very applicable to skincare and cosmetics? Not really. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. One of the studies that was linked to by this green beauty brand was paid for by Chevron, Sasol, and Shell Chemical. Those are all gas companies. So as we scroll through this study that was published in 2004, so what they say in the study is that four routes of exposure inhalation, oral, dermal, and human milk were considered in the exposure assessment. Of these, only inhalation was determined to be sufficiently significant to undergo detailed risk characterization. The most common exposure sources identified were fuels. 
particularly jet fuel, kerosene, diesel, paints, and other products containing solvents. So right there, we can really rule out this as being a source to reference about cosmetics or skincare's use of undecane because they just told us in the first three pages, they're talking about jet fuel, kerosene, diesel fuel, paints. And what they identified as being the most significant risk was inhalation. So you know me, of course I kept reading down to the area that they talked about potential for dermal and oral exposure. And what they say right away is that it's, it's unlikely in this scenario that people are going to be having repeated skin exposure to undecane with these products that have about 25% of undecane specifically um, and that the people most likely to come in dermal contact with this ingredient would be fuel handlers of aircraft carriers. So what I want to establish right now is that is not the type of research that we can apply to using it in a cosmetic product. So let's go forward talking about information that we can actually use for establishing safety for whether or not we want it in our skincare or cosmetics. So let's go directly to a website that I really enjoy that gives me a lot of links to or tells me about suppliers of cosmetics ingredients and that is called Special Chem. Of course I'll have all my sources linked below. But it tells us that it's classified as an emollient and a skin conditioner. And then it tells us there are two companies that actually make an ingredient using undecane. So let's look up the first one which is called Natura Soft. So it's actually a mixed ingredient that offers a smooth, soft, velvet skin feel. Now what started this whole video was this foundation by Vapor, the Velvet Matte Foundation. So we're seeing that this ingredient in this foundation is specifically there to help give that product that velvet matte feel. This ingredient is actually key to the performance of that foundation. Now let's look at this other company uh, supplier, BASF, Setiol Ultimate. This is a mixture of undecane and tridecane and it acts as an emollient. It has a light volatile, meaning part of it's going to evaporate, and 100% natural based hydrocarbon. It is readily biodegradable and a silicone alternative. So are you seeing a trend here? Is that this ingredient is being used to give you a very um, positive user experience. Um, it is Cosmos, Nature, and EcoCert certified. All right. Now kind of delving into its use again in cosmetics, let's jump over to the Vapor Velvet Matte Foundation ingredients list. As you can see right here, we see a series of ingredients. Now, one thing that I like to do when I see a series of ingredients like that is I like to copy and paste the entire thing into Google to see if a combination chemical will pop up. That's very frequently how you see emulsifiers listed. Sometimes you'll see combination preservatives listed that way. And sure enough, when we type it into Google that way, D-Wolf chemical will pop up. the tridecane undecane. They make this ingredient, which um, they describe as an innovative, fast-spreading, dry emollient that can significantly improve sensorial performance. We see that they, that they also make this ingredient, which is based on 100% natural feedstocks. It's a fast-spreading emollient that is both EcoCert approved. When we kind of break this down into the context of cosmetics, we can see that we can have some relative confidence that these ingredients are safe to use because they're being supplied by companies that are making them specifically for cosmetics. Before we move on to talking about some more of the safety risks or claims against this ingredient, I wanted to point out a couple of products in the market that use this ingredient. Here we have Paula's Choices 8% AHA Lotion. 
we have the Iuna Cream one, which is a green beauty brand, which is um, put together by Isabel Ramos, who has a PhD in cosmetic chemistry. La Roche Posay, their BB Blur. So it's not uncommon to see it in, in ingredients list in products. So now let's look at the claim that undecane can't be considered a green solvent. Now if we look up one of the articles that was linked to by this green beauty brand raising concern about undecane, um, when we look through this article we can see that this article is not talking about cosmetics or skincare. They are specifically talking about the emissions of undecane. Remember what I said, this is very important to understanding the safety of this ingredient and why you see a lot of talk about it is because again, it's a very volatile substance. It's a solvent used in a lot of things that are unsafe, jet fuel, diesel, kerosene, paint thinners. So try to keep that in your mind. I'm not going to go into this because again, right here in the introduction, it talks about how what they're attempting to establish is the safety of this ingredient's emissions, meaning the stuff that it's putting into the universe. What we're talking about are cosmetic products. Let's go to another link that came from this same Green Beauty brand um, saying that this ingredient wasn't safe. Now this is the Chemical Selection Working Group. They decided to do an investigation into undecane. I, of course, will link it below. It's on the NIH.gov. When you go through this article, you'll be very surprised at a lot of things. Well, first, you'll definitely think that undecane as an emission in a lot of things being used as a solvent is probably not a good idea. And what you'll also notice is that we've probably all been exposed to significant amounts. However, as you scroll through here and you see some of the ways that we're exposed to undecane, you'll notice that jet fuel, petroleum research, solvents for printing inks, St. John's wort. That's right, I said undecane is a component of St. John's wort. Where else do we find undecane? Perfumes, essential oils. This is a chemical, just like water, just like carbon dioxide, that is existing around us and that, yes, in some aspects, is being used in a way that is not benefiting our health. But as we read through here, what does this tell us about dermal exposure? There are a lot of information in this study. I highly recommend you read through it. On one page, it can scare you. On the next page, it can tell you, oh, no big deal. For example, in one area, it tells you that undecane was applied to the skin for 24 hours at 30% and no skin irritation was observed. On another page, they can tell you that they applied it to rabbit skin and that it produced mild irritation. So one of the claims lodged against undecane by another green beauty brand was that in combination with other ingredients it can be a tumor causing ingredient. The thing is if we go through that study where they link to they show that it says that undecane was shown to have tumor promoting activity. In 1976 undecane and another ingredient applied to the skin of female Swiss mice three weeks for 440 days induced papillomas in 41 of 50 animals. BP alone induced tumors in 12 of the 50 animals, while undecane alone did not produce tumors. There's also a lot of other things that are saying, um, there's a lot of other areas in here where they say that it's not linked to carcinogenity or tumor promotion. So um, when we really break it down, we can see that a lot of the information is maybe out of date, is, rated, is related to inhalation, is related to types of products we are not putting on our skin like jet fuel, um, and that when we really delve into the people making this as a cosmetic ingredient, we can see that it's being used in a safe, eco-cert manner. 
with complete accountability as to where it's being sourced from. So personally for me, when I read through all the literature that was linked to by this Green Beauty brand, I felt this ingredient was sorely misrepresented. And when I actually looked for valued or reputable sources about where it's coming from as a cosmetic chemical, and when I looked to other brands like Iuna that are using it, um, I find it to be safe. Now, please read through the literature yourself. Make your own decision. I'm not trying to frame your perspective, but what I'm trying to say is that the devil is in the details. You have to read the studies. And green beauty is notorious for taking things out of context. And I don't like that. Because context is what allows us to really understand safety. So anyway, more on all of this on Monday. Tune in and I'll see you then. Bye.